Now that we have integrated template of the main page into the Next application and used Tailwind CSS as a CDN link, it's a good time to actually install Tailwind CSS via preferred way such as Post CSS plugin or Vit plugin. And at the same time we're also going to upgrade the project from Tailwind CSS 3 to the first version. Actually, to simplify the process of installing Tailwind CSS, Next also provides module called Tailwind CSS. But just because this module is not updated to the latest version of Tailwind, which is 4 at the time of recording of this video, I'm going to do manual installation. So let's head over to the Tailwind CSS docs, open up installation section, specifically framework guides. Here we'll choose Next, and let's follow the steps. The first step we can skip, since we already have a Next application. Let's get to the second one. Here we just have to install a couple of npm dependencies. I'm going to run the following command in the terminal that is going to install Tailwind CSS as well as plugin for Vit to compile Tailwind CSS styles. Then just to include this plugin in the build process, let's open up nuxt.config.ts. In here, let's import Tailwind CSS with plugin. And then we're gonna have to call this plugin in the plugins array. I'm gonna create with object with the key of plugins, which will be an array of plugins, first of which is going to be our Tailwind CSS plugin that we have to call like so. And this way, anytime we're gonna build Next project, it is also going to compile Tailwind CSS styles. But we still have to do a couple of steps to make it work as intended. We're gonna have to create CSS file where we'll put this directive to include Tailwind CSS. So let's create an assets folder in the project. Inside, I'm going to put CSS folder and create new file called main.css, which is going to include Tailwind CSS. So let's place that directive within this file. And then to let Next know about this CSS file, let's open up configuration file once again, add key with the name of CSS, and specify pass to the CSS file in the array like this. And that's actually all what we have to do in order to make Tailwind CSS work in Next application. We can just start development server by running npm run dev and build process will be started. And as a part of it, it is also going to compile Tailwind CSS styles. So as for installation, that's all. But since we override some of the default Tailwind CSS styles, by using this Tailwind object, as well as here we declare a couple of new CSS classes. We still have to do the same thing, but inside of CSS file, since Tailwind CSS4 is configured inside CSS file. Alright, the first thing that I'm going to do in here is to include the font called OpenSans. So let's copy this Google Fonts link and paste it into this URL call, like so. Then we were also using manual strategy to enable dark mode by using this dark mode configuration option. And in Tailwind CSS4 to enable the same strategy, we're gonna have to add one line in CSS file. And the line that we need in this case is this one. I'm going to copy this line and paste it in our CSS file right here. Then to globally apply particular font, we were using this configuration before, but now we need to do the same thing in CSS file. So I'm going to add theme directive and overwrite one of the default Tailwind CSS variables. So this variable allows us to specify a global font that has to be used. I'm going to use Open Sans, the one that we have included before. Then let's get to configuring container utility. We have a couple of overrides applied to the container right here. We use custom puttings for containers as well as positional containers in a center. And to reproduce the same configuration inside 
CSS file. Let's add utility directive in here and say that we'd like to override some of these styles for the container utility. In here we're specifying paddings for the container as well as positioning all the containers in the center by using margin and line property with a value of auto like so. But when the screen will become bigger from tablet sizes and above, we're going to increase paddings up to two rams. And as for those additional classes, we were defining in here, we don't need to make any changes to these definitions. So let's just grab all this code with class definitions and paste it into CSS file. But as for this perspective 1000 class, since Tailwind CSS4 provides us with set of default classes to specify perspective property, we can use one of the default classes, for example, perspective distant. So there is no need to define perspective class anymore. I'm going to replace custom perspective 1000 class with the default one right here. And now we can just remove that definition of the custom class from here. So after doing all this, we can remove most of the things from the next configuration file. Because we have almost migrated everything, there are just a couple of classes that have to be applied to the body element, as it says in here. But we're gonna do it in a little bit different way. So instead of applying these classes to the body element, I'm going to create an additional div wrapper in the markup and apply those two classes directly to this wrapper, like so. So that configuration file will not contain any Tailwind CSS classes at all. Now I'm going to temporarily disable dark theme by removing this dark class. And just in case, let's restart development server by running npm run dev and take a look at the page. Let's also not forget to remove this body authors object from here. We no longer need it. And as you can see on the page, the light theme was applied. But I can simply switch between light and dark themes by toggling dark class on this div wrapper. All right, cool, we're almost done with the migration. There are just a couple of individual classes that we still have to fix. For example, this now bar is not supposed to have black border. Just like mobile navigation, the border should have light gray color. And then if we'll scroll down the page, there is this input field, which has bigger shadow and also it has double border. So I'm going to remove this outer black border and keep only one. Let's go back to the app.view component and quickly do all necessary changes. So right next to the class border B, I'm going to specify the color of the border, which will be gray with a shade of 200. And the same class I'm also going to apply to the mobile navigation right here. Also right next to border B class, which specifies bottom border. Then to make the shadow behind the input field smaller, I'm going to use shadow access class instead of SM. And to get rid of the outer border when focusing this input field, we can use ring transparent class, which is basically going to make that border transparent. So looks like it is fixed, but if I'm going to apply dark theme again by adding dark class to this div element, we will see that there will be another additional border when focusing this input field. This time it is white. To get rid of this outline, I'm going to use outline hidden class. And that's it. We are done with the migration. So before finishing this lesson, I would like to make one little improvement to this page. And that is this one. I prefer to fix the footer at the very bottom of the page, regardless of the current screen width, because currently, as you can see, the footer is kind of hanging in the middle of the page. And just because we have the header, the main content, as well as the footer contained within the same container, let's make this container flexible and align elements vertically. 
and also let's assign the minimum height of this container to be equal to the height of the browser window, which we can do by applying min h screen class. Let's take a look at the result. Now as you can see the container takes up all available height and all we have to do to position the footer at the bottom of that container is apply empty auto class to the footer, which is going to add margin top property with a value of auto. So now regardless of the screen width, the footer will always be positioned at the very bottom of the page. And there is actually one more slight change that I'd like to do, and that is related to buttons, because in the third version of Tailwind, when hovering over buttons, the cursor would change on pointer, which is not the case in the fourth version. So to get the previous behavior, we would have to manually assign cursor pointer class to all buttons. I'm gonna add cursor pointer class in here. And let's check the result. As you can see when hovering over this button now, the cursor shape changes on pointer. And that's it, we have installed Tailwind CSS by using Vite plugin, as well as upgraded the project from Tailwind CSS 3 to Tailwind CSS 4. And at the same time we have drastically reduced the amount of configurations inside nuxt.config.ts file. In here we only have custom text applied to the title. Link to the source code of this project will be as always in the video description.